Hello and welcome to our Year 11 Information Evening for Maths at MPCA. My name is Miss Reid and I'm the Trust Director for Maths. The aim of tonight's presentation is to further support our Year 11 students in preparing for their first set of assessments. The exam board we use for Maths across all of our schools is OCR. The Maths GCSE is tiered. Students will either sit Foundation or higher. On Foundation, students can attain Grades 1 to 5. On higher, students can attain grades four to nine. All of our students will sit three an hour and a half exams, made up of three papers. Each paper is out of 100. There are two calculator papers, paper one and paper three, and one non-calculator paper, paper two. So what content is assessed in each of the papers? All content can be assessed on any of the three question papers relevant to the tier. Some questions will draw together elements of maths from different topic areas. What are the questions like? A mix of styles from short questions, single mark questions to multi-step problems are included in the papers and the papers get harder as you progress through the paper. Do you need to remember any formula? You are expected to be able to recall, select and apply formula. The Maths GCSE content is made up of six areas. Number, Algebra, Ratio, Proportion and Rates of Change, Geometry and Measures, Probability and Statistics. The table shows the approximate weightings of the topic areas. For example, 20% of the foundation content is Algebra, yet 30% of the higher tier content is Algebra. All students will need to know the following formula. It is important students memorise these before going into the exam. Higher tier students need to memorise the additional formula below. What is the best way to revise for your maths exam? We recommend that you use your gap analysis to find out where your strengths are and what you need to improve. Focus on what you can't do. Resist that temptation to keep practising what you know. Choose one topic at a time from your gap analysis either a red topic or a yellow topic. If you find a topic that you can't remember how to do, watch the video on it. The Hegarty clip number is in your gap analysis. Then complete some practice questions on the topic and check your answers. Don't forget to revisit the topic in a few days and also in a few weeks time to make sure you remember it. The most important thing is to remember the best way to revise maths is to do maths. Before your maths exam, make sure you can use your equipment. But remember, when you are revising, only use a calculator if it's a calculator question. Make sure you can remember all of the formula before going into your exam. We recommend that you practice in exam conditions and time yourself, especially when you're working on past paper questions. A good idea for time is a minute a mark. And finally, use your best free resource, your teachers. You will be given lots of revision materials from your teachers. We recommend the revision guide CGP OCR GCSE Maths 9 to 1. We also recommend the websites Hegarty Maths, Corbett Maths, OCR and GCSE Pod. You will find lots of resources and exam questions that you can use for additional revision here. We have some exam tips that we would like to share with you. Always write the units in your answer, for example, centimetres or centimetres squared. Write down the figures on your calculator and then make a suitable rounding. Don't round your numbers during a calculation, as this will often give you an incorrect answer. Don't forget to check your answers, especially to see that they are reasonable. For example, the mean height of a group of men will not be 187 metres. Write down your calculations. Do not only enter them into your calculator or complete them in your head, as you usually get marks for showing a correct method. Finally, if you have time left at the end of the exam, check your work. The best way to do this is to work through the questions again from the start. Another important exam tip is to read the question again when you complete your answer to see if you've missed anything. Students often forget to double check how the question has asked them to give their answer. For example, rounded to a certain amount of significant figures or decimal places, in simplest form, in exact form, 
as a fraction, decimal or percentage. In this example, the question asks you to give your answer correct of three significant figures. However, students often give their answer not to the correct three significant figures. This will result in losing a mark in your exam. It is always important to understand what the question is asking you to do. If it says estimate the value of or find an approximate answer to, do not work out the exact answer. Round the numbers in the question to one significant figure and use these in your calculations. If it says explain, comment or give a reason for your answer, use words to explain an answer. If it says show that, use words, numbers or algebra to show an answer. If it says prove, you need to use a rigid algebraic or geometric proof in your answer. If it says give an exact value, give the answer as a square root. Our final exam tip this evening is that following paper one, it is more likely that topics that have not yet been assessed will come up in paper two and paper three. Therefore, it is useful to have a topic checklist to mark off the topics that have been assessed in the papers. For example, if there's a question involving the quadratic formula in paper one, it is unlikely to appear again in paper two or paper three. Though, please note that the topics already assessed in paper one could be assessed again. So don't focus all of your revision time on the topics that haven't came up yet. That is the end of the maths part of your year 11 information evening. We hope you have found it useful and we would all like to wish you good luck in your assessments. Remember, stay positive, be resilient and try your best. We are all very proud of you and we believe in you. Good luck. If you have any questions, speak to your maths teachers. Thank you.